um, cool stuff. She's gonna introduce herself to you later. So, um, lifestyle blogging is not just about self promotion and selfies. That I can't do because I've seen the website. So, uh, here's to you. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I actually don't usually present about all this, so I don't think that I am the expert or anything. I just write a lot, and I've been writing for a long time. So John was just asking me if I could come in and share. So the same thing I expected, like 15 people, and uh, I thought it would just be an informal session, but it turns out there's quite a lot of people today. Um, yeah, so the topic was supposed to be quite funny, right? Because everybody expects lifestyle bloggers to just post selfies all day and uh, yeah, nothing much else. But uh, I really enjoy blogging, so I'm going to just share a couple of things I've learned along the way, and hopefully you find something of value to you today. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you that I'm not gonna do a writing workshop today. <laughs> I'm also not going to do a, a, a clickbait, you know, a crash course because I obviously am not an expert in all those things. But what I'm gonna tell you is really uh, my story, how did I manage to start blogging, and what I learned uh, eventually creating better content each time, and how it also helped me in terms of my SEO because uh, now I'm. I'm listening to what was being shared and I realize that a lot of the things that good writing helps you with uh, is linked to SEO as well. So yeah. Um, so this is uh, the timeline of uh, what I, I did in blogging. So I created my first blog uh, using Microsoft front page. Anybody remembers that? <laughs> yeah. So you know, I was in a computer club and then I was like, okay, I'm going to create a blog. So I individually created pages on Microsoft front page and I uploaded it uh, on a free subdomain somebody gave, it, gave me. So that was all the way in 2000. So I've been blogging for about 16 years. Yeah. Um, then in 2002, I started blogging on Blogger because that was you know, the rage at the point of time. And then uh, 2007, I moved over to WordPress because you know, that's the time I'm a teenager, so I wanted to try new stuff. And I thought... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, WordPress was something that I stuck to in the end. So um, eventually, in 2010, I co-founded um, The Campbells, which was actually a really uh, frivolous lifestyle blog. We blogged about going to parties. We posted lots of selfies. So we did everything uh, that a regular <laughs> lifestyle blogger would do um, before uh, reaching 2014. So what actually happened is I went from selfies, selfies, emo posts, and then uh, some recommendations somewhere in 2010. Uh, but then what happened was this. So right about at this point, in between 2010 and 2014, can't remember when, uh, I, I asked myself, because I was kind of sick of writing the same things over and over, uh, what would my readers want to read, right? Because it's boring to write just for myself. Um, so I started writing about what readers wanted. And then the next point was just over here. And then I got sick of blogging because I wrote what everybody else wanted to read. And I really didn't write anything that I wanted to write. So it was really uh, tiring. And I just ended up writing every single day. But nothing of it was of importance to me. And then uh, right over about here, which is probably the best part. Um, oops. Yeah. So I asked, I asked myself, you know, uh, what can I write that is of value to my readers and still um, of value to me? Something that would impact me, make me feel happy to f write, and at the same time, would, people would enjoy reading. So this is a fantas fantastic quote. It says, to hell with the facts, we need stories. And I think that's the nature about sharing online. You really want to read a story about somebody else. You really want to connect with somebody else. Uh, I confess I've never read anything by Ken Kesey, I think. <laughs> but I, I know he's a novelist. Um, but I thought this was very apt. So I'm just, I'm just going to share um, what I discovered during that point when I could create the content that I am proud of today. Uh, and that is, this is my recipe. It's actually quite common sense. I think it's very basic. Um, but it balances what I want and what the readers want. So for me, what is important to me, I want to express myself when I write my content. I want to feel satisfied when I write it. And I also want to feel fulfillment, and I want to be creative at the same time. So it means being able to experiment and to you know, play around with things. At the same time, I needed to realize that I needed to balance what my readers wanted. And that would give me the likes, the shares, the attention that I, that I feel would inspire me to write more. Um, but most importantly, I needed to know how to deliver value to the people that I'm writing for. So 
what's most important is uh, connection. So when you balance what you want and what people want to read as well, um, you will find you'll be able to take more pride in doing that. And connection is really about being able to talk to people that you care about. Uh, your readers become people you care about, at least for me. Uh, and I wanted to know what was interesting for them. Uh, I started doing a lot of analytics and all, all that. So I'll go on a little bit detail uh, later on. Um, but at this point, I'm just, I mean, there's nothing much that I can share that you don't already know. Um, it's really just about inspiring new ways of thinking, uh, whether you can look at things from a different perspective and to find that sweet spot between what you want and what other people want to read. So, um, yeah, what do I want to create? So this is a simple question. Uh, what do I love as a lifestyle blogger? What did I love about my life that I wanted to share because it would add value to other people? So this can take the form of um, personal stories. It can be new or unfamiliar topics. For me, I really enjoyed, um, I was actually more of like, I write a lot about food, I write a lot about uh, beauty, but I didn't really do a lot of fashion because I thought that I wasn't really a model, you know. I shouldn't be posing uh, and taking photos of myself. Um, but I thought that it was interesting, it would be challenging. I want to try it, see whether I could do anything with it. So that to me was an unfamiliar thing. And I tried it and actually it worked for me. So I started taking more photos and I became more confident. Um, I also experimented a lot. So different ways of writing. I think when you, initially when I blogged, I was a, a lot about what I did. So it was, I went here, I enjoyed this, I enjoyed that. Um, eventually it reached a stage whereby it was kind of boring. So I started doing different stories. Uh, how I share a lot more about um, my experience and how it might connect with somebody else. For example, um, if I blogged about a place to eat, I would think about what my experience was like when I was, I was there, how other people would um, enjoy that experience as well and try and bring that to life. So I use, uh, I'll use very simple words. I don't really use um, you know, big phrases and so on. But I would just use short sentences, you know, easy to understand sentences, and just explain how that felt to me. And uh, I think that, that really worked because people would be more willing to connect. I also noticed that when I did this, a lot of people would not comment on the blog. I mean, who else here, you know, has nobody commenting on your blog and you feel like you're writing to yourself? <laughs> yeah. um, but I got a lot of comments on Facebook when I shared the links. And then I realized people were reading it, but maybe they weren't really comfortable with um, commenting on my blog but they were still interested in what I was writing. So that sort of gave me a little bit more um, uh, idea of what I wanted to write again next time around. So obviously, I, I would still want to write about topics that I'm passionate about. So for me, um, these, this includes uh, still beauty. I, I still enjoy beauty. But I started writing about uh, lessons that I've learned. And surprisingly, you know, things that I learned from my relationships, bad ones, good ones, uh, my bosses, things like that. And people actually enjoy reading it. Um, I mean, you never know what kind of topics will be great, right? You just experiment and you see if, if that works for you and if that makes you happy. And then I had to think about um, what did my readers like anyway? I mean, it's not very fun to write things and then have realized that there's only like one, 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 one viewer who viewed the page or there's no Facebook likes on it or, you know, it's just pointless because why would you write if it's not to be read? So then I started doing uh, research. I used Google Analytics. I went on to find out about keywords, things that people were interested in through my blog. Uh, noticed that, OK, for example, um, my sharing of my relationship was one of the, I mean, better hit sites. And now I, I was thinking, why is it that people were interested in that? Is it because people like to read about relationships? And I realized it's not. It was actually more of that personal connection that they had with me. Uh, when they read about my experiences. So that's when I realized that I could write about things with me, I, point of view, but it had to be something that people could also understand and identify with in their own lives. So that's how I started crafting all my stories. Uh, when I could see what I love doing and then what people love reading, I started to get a better picture of um, how I should write it, what's the tone of voice I would use, um, what is the kind of... Uh, uh, um, experience people are looking for and so on. So I know this is like the you know top thing to do now, doing listicles, like five things to do or 1,000 things to do in Singapore when you know clearly there's no 1,000 things. 
but um, obviously people enjoy reading this and for some reason it works you know for most sites so okay listicles are great um, but I think that would be pretty boring if I did listicles because I don't think I could spend I, I don't think I could spend like three hours just putting pictures and like two sentences underneath each activity or you know each restaurant it's just boring for me so what I did was I realized I could do listicles also you know why don't I do something different with it I could do it what I enjoy doing so I started thinking about angles so readers also like good photos I think this is a given uh, a lot of people actually go onto a blog site just to look at photographs and that's very demoralizing to people who write but uh, <laughs> still continue writing because eventually somebody will enjoy reading it after looking at the photos but your first thing is you sh should still good, get good photos so invest in a good camera or at least learn how to use your iPhones properly okay and then of course how could I write exciting titles to be honest I had a, a big problem with this because when you want to SEO optimize your site and when you want to write exciting titles you end up with the same few things uh, over and over again so um, I had to do a balance. So some days I would write something that I liked, you know, and other days I would write something SEO optimized. So I don't do the same thing over and over just because it's better for SEO. I mean, it's my blog, it's my website. I think I should have a bit more control <laughs> over what I do uh, without, you know, uh, compromising on the SEO as well. And of course, I always looked out for top search topics. Uh, I have a friend here, Kenneth, who is actually, uh, he writes for a blog as well. Okay. <laughs> So Kenneth actually writes for 5meanders.com and uh, he writes about controversial topics. So uh, John, maybe you can ask him to talk about that next time. <laughs> so he writes about current affairs and those are very top search topics. I think if you ask Kenneth later on, if you want to speak to him, you'll realize that a lot of times uh, the things he writes about gets a lot of hits and link truths. So um, yeah, but top search topics are important too because for your own blog site, I think it's important that you write what you want, but you also need to know, you know, within that group of people who are reading what you read, um, uh, reading what you write, uh, is there any particular topic that's of interest, interest to them? And is there any way you could create um, content in the same topic area? Might not be the same thing, it could be um, a different segment of the same uh, topic. Like for example, beauty, it could be zoomed into treatments, it could be skincare. Um, for relationships, it could be like with friends or with uh, boyfriends and so on. So it's just finding different angles to approach writing and just creating things that you know you could share about in your own personal life and share that with others. Yeah. So um, I also realized that it's very it's a bit more interesting if I mix things up, so I don't do the same things over and over again. Uh, for example, maybe I do uh, listicles and personal stories mixed into one. So instead of doing like five places to eat, I could do five places I had good memories at or something like that. So something that could connect with other people when they go, go somewhere. If you realize that a lot of uh, people are very nostalgic, they really enjoy reading about something that they can remember. So if they have been to a place, you know, if you've, been, if you've personally been to a place where you form very incredible memories, things that you can't forget about. Maybe it could be a, a place where you had your first, um, your first group outing or something like that. Maybe people would have that same kind of experience, but they would like to, you know, find out about yours. Um, I also talk. Uh, I also do a mix up of my favorite topics and uh, storylines. So what I do is, um, maybe I would write about. Um, hmm, let me think. Can't think of anything. Anybody have a topic? Chicken rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, chicken rice. I mean, if I were good, I was going to write about just the chicken rice was great. The chili sauce was awesome. And um, I mean, what else can you say? The restaurant was very beautiful. I think nobody would really want to care about that article because there's a thousand and one other articles that is exactly like that. But what makes people want to read about it is because of my own experience there. Is it something that happened that caught my eye? Was it uh, you know, an observation of the person, uh, the people who eat there? Or is it something like, uh, I don't know, um, what chicken rice means to me. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's about finding out what your, your particular storyline is and sharing that together with your favorite topic. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, try something new and then have great photos with it. So maybe you've tried something, uh, you, you're not really sure about what you can do uh, 
that's different. But maybe you've never written about SEO. So maybe today, after you know Tommy's uh, talk, you're suddenly like, oh, I'm so inspired. I'm going to share about SEO. Then okay, maybe a very challenging thing to do that would make you feel um, you know uh, more challenged would be to maybe have great photos with that. So how would you write an article that would be lifestyle, you know, uh, inverted commas, um, is actually to tell the story through the great photos. So it could be yourself uh, looking through, I don't know, uh, websites, and then it's a photo. I mean, the, yeah, possibilities are endless. Of course, there's always the reviews, and these are always things that get you a lot of SEO uh, search hits and stuff. Because people are always looking about the same things. What is interesting to you is most likely interesting to somebody else. Um, so if, for example, you have a review of a food place, I think food is the easiest for us to identify with. There's definitely somebody else who wants to know about that place before they visit. So writing a review, but can you add in an intriguing title? Why is something that you don't know about, uh, people would not know about the place that you could include in the title? I mean, it's about brainstorming uh, different angles as well. So then uh, another one is like, you know, it could be your favorite topic and another popular topic, and you blend it together. So it could be relationships is one popular topic, but your favorite topic is where to eat. Then you would say where to eat with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your mom or something like that. So I mean, I'm just going to end quite quickly because I think there's only so much I can say about creating content. A lot of it is actually sitting down, uh, running through and analyzing what you already have written or you know, looking. In fact, the best way to learn is to look at other people. So other successful bloggers or other successful websites with great content, what is it that they're, they're good at? A lot of the times you realize it's the same few things. It's a good title. It's a good, good quality of written work. Uh, you know, it's not just a basic description. There's definitely something more emotional to it. And they're always that same few things. But how do they do it creatively? That's one thing that I always observe in other people's blogs, as well as what people are interested in when they read my blog. For example, if a particular um, blog post about um, my recent visit to a particular restaurant was more um, welcome, you know, people enjoy sharing it, then I would look into it and I think about why people are sharing it. Is it because of the personal story I shared with it? Or is it because of the photos? Or is it just because people are from a particular area and they wanted to find out about it? So I go in and analyze my content. But at the end of the day, it's important not to lose the plot. I think um, if you are going to just write just to get read and you don't really care about yourself and what you like to do, then it kind of gets boring and you will definitely stop blogging. I mean, I've been blogging for 16 years, so I, I guess in some way, um, I was still able to enjoy what I do. Uh, and I guess it comes a lot of the, of the time from the creative um, leeway I'm, I'm given. Uh, because I run my own thing, I can do whatever I want with it. Um, also, uh, this is something that I, 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 I really have to share, is that readers don't know what they want until they see it. So you know, everybody will tell you, hey, you should write about this or that, or you shouldn't write this way because you know I don't like it. Of course, you can take in the feedback. But I don't think people would know what exactly they wanted. And I'm sure you have like clients, uh, you have clients, right? If you're in agency or anything, and they'll tell you that they want something like this. But in the end, they don't know what it is until they see something good. So I, I always believe that you know, at the end of the day, you should still um, stay connected with your vision. So if you have something that you visualize um, of that blog or of that website that you have, you should stick to it and not stray from it too much just because you want to pander to what people want to read. Yeah, so that's it. Um, the, the, these are my blog sites: uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, you, <laughs> you can connect to me here. Obviously, I look a lot better in my profile picture. Uh, <laughs> as is uh, as everybody. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. But I don't think there's a lot of questions. La. It's quite a straightforward topic. Oh, yes. Yeah.
they're secretly clicking. <laughs> at least they're secretly clicking, and at least they're reading the post. Um, I think that when you there are certain topics that you are very passionate about, which actually people would not automatically want to read about it. Books, unfortunately, is one of those things. Uh, I think if you blogged about history as well, I think maybe depends. I, I'm not sure if that's going to be popular for most people. But yeah, so my question is, uh, I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing now, although I, you know, the view count is not good, but so how do you find the balance? You know, should, should you talk about food? I know that's, that's what Singaporeans like. You know, do you enjoy eating? Because if you don't, that's going to be horrible. <laughs> Yeah, so if you don't enjoy reading, I don't think you should... Uh, if you enjoy reading, you don't enjoy eating, you shouldn't blog about eating. Yeah, but if you like books, um, and you realise that people are still reading that relationship stories, what about books can you talk about relationships? Are there books that you've read that teach you lessons about relationships? You know, things like that. So it's about finding uh, something interesting that people want to read about, putting that in the title, uh, angling your story in a way that, you know, they will feel more compelled to read it. But at the same time, you still get to introduce the books that you like, or you can still review the books that you like. Yeah. Um. Any more questions? Oh, you guys want to speak to her alone later. <laughs> yeah. okay. So um, I encourage you to look at the website, not just because I built the website, uh, but really there are some great articles. It's one of the few that I read that I don't want to shoot myself.